So tonight I'm going to talk about and demo this MP3 player I got off AliExpress for $5.20 US with free shipping. And it comes with uh, a little remote control like this, just one of your standard uh, kind of soft squishy button remotes. We can probably see it operating there, flashing away with a little purple glow. Well, here's the main module. It has a USB connector there and uh, a receiver for the infrared, of course. So as you blurt out those codes, it's received by, by this guy here. And um, then just a couple of connection points. So a connection point for the, the output, uh, audio output, and a connection point for 9 volts in it's marked as, so uh, 9 volts just goes straight into a 5 volt regulator that's situated just there. So um, yeah, probably could get away with uh, 6 or 7 volts as a minimum in and uh, maybe 12 volts as a max depending on uh, how much this little regulator can uh, dissipate in terms of heat. So that's all it is. It's just got this uh, single 16 pin IC here and uh, that seems to be the brains of the whole thing. It's marked SFT8020. So let's give this little $5 device a, a try out. And um, the other thing I should note is that it comes with a couple of connectors like this uh, which plug into these uh, sockets here. And um, I've made up already some little breakout cables like this just to allow me to plug this into something useful like an external amplifier. I've got uh, another one here like this that uh, breaks out to a 3.5mm stereo socket. So I can plug in a, uh, a stereo plug into that. and. Uh, what else do I have at my disposal? Well, I've made a little breakout like this that uh, allows me to plug in a 9 volt battery to power this thing. And I've got a collection of USB keys here in um, various states of, uh, of good or bad health. Uh, so this one has four MP3s uh, that were sourced from YouTube, the free audio library. Uh, so that gives us a test of um, playing a few bits of music in sequence. There's also uh, five short WAVs here that I recorded. So um, that, that'll test the WAV functionality. And this guy has just got a single MP3. So we'll see how... how it behaves when, when dealing with just a single song as well, which might be um, a good application. Say if you wanted to drive this thing from an Arduino to create a single sound effect or something, you might load up a USB key with just a, a single recording and um, off you go. So this is indeed a USB key. It's, it's lost its cover some time ago. You can see that the cover was just epoxied on and um, yeah. I ripped it off because I was curious to know what was inside it. But this video is about this little MP3 module, so let's give it a try out and uh, and see how it goes. It's worth noting that these things only really support MP3 and WAV, and that's pretty clearly um, pointed out here in the in the text that's provided. So only really support MP3. And WAV formats, uh, I've tried things like M4As and um, FLAC formats, but um, had no luck with those. So um, yeah, just simple old-fashioned MP3s and WAVs. Um, it's not a big problem because most other formats could be um, decompressed and stored on a USB key as, as WAV without too much trouble these days. You know, there's plenty of storage on even a cheap USB key these days, so um, storing music as WAV for uh, an embedded application such as you might um, use this for, not a real problem I don't think.
Here's a close-up of the 16-pin Soic IC that's on this MP3 player. It's um, got this interesting Pi sort of symbol mark here, maybe a J and an L or something. Um, not sure who that manufacturer is, but um, I think probably uh, an indigenous Chinese manufacturer there. And uh, the marking uh, is AC1433. CF4J18 dot one hyphen B two E I believe and um, yeah can't really find much on the internet about this IC but um, obviously um, a, a fairly uh, you know uh, fixed um, application specific IC here uh, you can see that on the bottom left hand uh, side, sorry, the bottom right hand side, you've got um, connections to the USB connector and um, yeah, just to, um, to the left hand side you've got some connections running down to uh, a small LED there and uh, the infrared receiver and um, yeah, not a heck of a lot else apart from connections to power. There you can see that 78LO5 5 volt regulator there. So if you wanted to run this thing off 5 volts instead of a high voltage, you could um, just lift that regulator off the circuit board and uh, just bridge the contacts between input and output and then feed it with a 5 volt supply like you might get uh, off an Arduino. And uh, those are the, the two connectors there. I'll flip it over and uh, see if we can see the, the underside. Really no components or anything populated on the underside. Just this marking here that uh, signifies the device SFT8020. Alright, I'm plugged in now. So I've got um, a cable here going off to my amplifier and uh, I've got negative connected here, positive connected here to my bench power supply set for 9 volts. So let me flick the power on the bench power supply and let's see how we go. And of course I've got um, four tracks loaded up on this USB key here as well. So I'll hit the power switch and we'll see what we get. Alright, so that definitely worked. Um, now I'll apply the power again and um, let's see what it does. So pretty quickly after applying power, um, it starts to play and uh, you'll note that it starts to play from the same the start of the same song again. Uh, so if you're midway through a track and you turn the power off, turn the power back on, it starts playing from that current track again. And it does seem to have um, a memory like that, so it'll remember the current track it's playing, but it won't remember the point at which you're, you're at in the current track. So it'll always start it from the start, which could be an advantage actually if you're wanting to just play a sound effect from an Arduino or something, because if you just um, toggle the power to this thing, switch the power on and off uh, to it, um, you'll know that it'll always start at the, the start of the currently selected track. So let's um, play a bit with the remote control now. So I'll fire it up again. Here's the music playing and uh, I'll hit the next button and uh, pretty much instantly it switches to the next track and another track and then the last of the four tracks and press next again and it takes you to the first track again let's try the volume keys now so I can pair the volume 
right back like this and uh, well, it's a little bit easier to hear me now. So I'll cycle the power again because I'm interested to see whether uh, turning the power off restores the original volume or it stays at the reduced volume. So power's off, let's power up again. Okay, so it seems like uh, it has a power on default of full volume. So I'll just take that volume down. But you've got a few steps there. Of course, there's no real feedback display apart from this little flashing light here um, telling you what's going on. So you've got to listen out for the changes in volume and the changes in tracks. Let's try the mute button. Okay, so that seems to have muted just fine. And um, let's try the play pause button. And so that seems to just pause the current track and the LED stops flashing here. So if I play again, LED starts to flash. And uh, I'll step backwards through the tracks now. There's the previous track, previous track again, previous track again, and previous track again. Um, so this is kind of like a, a circular loop. It doesn't hit the end point of the playlist. It'll go back to the start if you press next or previous enough times. And um, I'll see if any of these numbers work. So I press 3, okay, so that seemed to take us to the start of a track, I'll press 2, that took us to another track, and if I press 1, it takes us to another track, and I'll try pressing 4. And that takes us to the last of the tracks. So it does seem that you can um, randomly seek to tracks by pressing the buttons on this uh, little remote control. One thing to um, note about that is that there's a bit of a delay. Um, I assume that's because it's timing out waiting to see whether you're looking for track 3 or 33 or 332 or whatever so it, it just uh, waits a little while after pressing the button before it says okay you're not going to press any more keys I'll start the next track. So let's um, start on track number one okay and I'll switch the power off now and we'll see whether it remembers the fact that we're on this track number one okay powers off let's apply the power again and let's remember the track that we're currently on. It started from the start of the track, um, but the volume has gone up to its maximum. So the device seems to work quite well, really. I'm pretty happy with it. And um, it's kind of interesting that it has that um, resume from the start of the present track. Um, that could be a little bit annoying in some circumstances because um, you might do a lot of, say, short car trips. You put this in your car and you find that you're hearing the same song uh, a lot of the time because uh, you stop, turn the ignition off, start it up again, and it starts at the start of the track you were listening to. Um, but in the case that you're wanting to control this thing from a microcontroller or an Arduino or something, that's actually quite a useful feature, as is defaulting to the maximum volume. So you have a kind of um, predictable known state. And that's even more true if you have um, an MP, uh, a USB key that's got just a single track on it. So if I've got this uh, track, single track on this USB key, and I apply the power. Okay, so it started up at maximum volume and it started at the start of the track. I'll cycle the power again. And here we are at maximum volume. 
and the start of the track again. So if we wanted to embed this in one of our projects, all we'd need is something to switch this thing on and yeah, you're done. You've got a, a sound effect. Just make sure it's switched on for long enough and um, it will play that sound effect. Okay, just a quick proof that WAV files play just fine as well. So here are five very short WAV files that I recorded with Goldwave. And uh, if I apply power, we should uh, start to hear them. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So no problems there, uh, not the greatest web files in the world, I have to admit, but um, yeah, plays them just fine. So that's about the sum of it. A cool little MP3 playing module here. Also plays, plays WAVs and um, yeah, got some really good uh, potential for embedding in projects and uh, let's play out with a bit of free YouTube music. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like this video. Mm -hmm.